So hello everybody, sorry again for the inconveniences and thank you for joining me here. Me and Mickey Mouse will um, speak about the, the, the key things, the key uh, problems you might face when you want to um, uh, become your your uh, hobby or your project to something which is uh, which requires more. So uh, it can be it doesn't need to be a company from a company. It can be that you want to work on your side project or it's just a hobby for you. Um, it's really sad that we have to go to PDF because I had an awesome video, but I will show you at any other point. So um, who will consider himself here an entrepreneur? Hands up. Okay. Out of these guys who consider themselves entrepreneurs, who can tell me what an entrepreneur is in more than two words? Anybody can say? Nobody? Why shy? You can say it briefly. Problem solver. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of the the, the skills you will have to have. Um, it's really easy. You, you know, you, we will see that it's more than that. But uh, really, basically, we, we have one side. Which is the uh, huh? is it hearing well? Yeah, we have one side which is the entrepreneur, which is this guy who who is taking risks, this guy who who wants to build something new, who wants to change people's lives, who who lives lives his life out of joy. And the reason why I put a picture of a kid because I think they are one of the best entrepreneurs out there. It's for some reason I think we lose this kind of skills uh, over the course of our lives. I won't get into the reasons. But uh, just when you start to a kid, they are in, in parks or whatever they are. I just saw one month one kid picking a pinch of sand, and it was just amazing the way he was exploring it, the way he was turning it around, even tasted it, smelling him to get every detail. You know, this is something we have to, I think we really have to keep in mind for our products because it helps us to stay somehow ignorant, which I think is a pretty important fact from, from an entrepreneur. The other side, of course, is the the developer. You probably know better. Uh, well, everybody who's here, and this is a lazy guy who who likes as well challenges, who is competitive, who who likes to build new things. Uh, and probably, if you want to build them, then you're not the the best developer. But what happens when you combine both? If you if you see it, these abilities of these two guys are going in the same direction all the time. It's not that one is black and white. It's that when you put them together, one boosts the other. Like, for instance, competitivity with, uh, with risk-taking becomes something bigger because both point there to this direction. So it seems that this profile, this new entrepreneur profile, entrepreneur profile it's called, and uh, think, thinking of patenting it, um, it kind of kind of help you to achieve what you want to do here, and we can see examples over the course of history, especially in the last uh, years. All these guys you see, the most successful cases in the last years uh, are entrepreneurs. Even for the guys, you don't think they really were developers, or they really came from the technician side. Uh, they really did. For instance, Steve Jobs. For those of you who, who don't know, but probably with his biography out, you most of you know, he was working at Atari because his father was a really good electronics engineer, and that was the reason why he got in. And this attracted him to to go to computers further on. Uh, for instance, the CEO of Path is another example, which we think comes from from business and financial, but he was playing a lot with web as well, and he was working on Facebook. So it's it seems to have uh, some some potential to, to be in this profile. And this is something that if you're here, you probably already have, right? Uh, so this is something that you have. But I want to give you more reasons to, to start with your, with your project or with your idea. And one of them is that the workplace is changing super fast, as we know. Uh, jobs today wasn't existent five years ago. In 10 years, we'll have new jobs called, have no idea, probably. Uh, I don't go. I won't go creative now. But the thing is that companies are realizing about this, and they are not looking that much uh, for people who are super mega hyper duper experts in some kind of technical background, because it will probably die in in some years. Probably not. Probably yes. For instance, if you look for an, ex an expert on Android these days, this guy, this girl has uh, three to five years of experience, and this is the top you can get. So they are looking more, instead of people who, who owns the knowledge, they are looking for people who can handle different knowledge from different sides and the way they combine it, the way they are proactive, the way they, they can build new things out of this knowledge. 
and these are not not, the, not all the people like as as entrepreneurs. Uh, so companies are looking for this kind of people. And uh, this is some other advantage that some people is is afraid about. Uh, what well, should I go to build my company or not? Then I might lose the 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 opportunity in my work. I might you know lose some track, which is actually not true because. It will make you ready for for the next step, for the next, uh, especially in tech. It will make you ready for the next stage of of, uh, of how how uh, companies will move. You can see the difference here is when you are just working. It doesn't have to be an engineer, but when you when you are working just one thing, uh, you have one top skill, which can be coding if you're an engineer or, or designing if you're a designer. And you have little knowledge about everything else, but when you become an entrepreneur, you will have to. Uh, you have all the sense to know some some things. You know, you you won't be an expert, but you will know some things about uh, HR, PR, business, uh, financials, budget uh, budget rising, and all these things. This is an asset that you might keep even if in the future things doesn't go well. Um, one another thing, I will try to go fast through this because it's not really important, um, is that companies, some people see companies as a competitor, uh, which uh, is not really like that. Companies have their own things, they have to survive, they have to be profitable themselves, they already have the, their products. They already have the queue of ideas which they will develop in the future years. So don't think they will come to see your ideas, steal it, because you probably, uh, for them, are much, much less valuable. So let's try to not to be that egocentric. They won't come to steal our idea, or hopefully they won't do it. If they do, you come to me and you blame to me uh, as much as you want. Uh, so you have really nothing to lose, and the the barriers, the entry barriers are these days really low. So we have to take the chance. Now is is the best stage. And last thing is that um, I really admire I really admire these three guys because these three guys. Are are really good on what they do and in di in other different things that have nothing to do. For instance, you might know Will Smith. He's a great singer, great actor. He might go to directing movies in the next years probably. Uh, you see Will Smith pro in three sports. Rafa Nadal is a Spanish guy. You might just know it for tennis, but he was he, when he was really young, he was really really top football player, but he chose tennis. What I mean with this is that. And recent studies uh, uh, support this, is that we used to think that what form ourselves as people uh, were DNA, one environment and education, but recent studies are showing that DNA is playing less of a role than, than we thought. So it's more on you, because education and environment, it's really on you. It's really on, on how much effort you put on that. So at some point, that will mean that, and these guys are a proof, that if you want to become a singer, even today, you're 20, 30, 40, whatever, uh, if you start at some point to sing, you will eventually become a singer. It's really on you. Um, so I hope that we have enough reasons to now uh, be brave and get out of this room and start documenting, coding, defining our project. and. For those of you who didn't have the reasons, I hope I have gave you some. But now, how do we do it? Let's go to the next part of our of our slides, uh, which is the operation. It's something, some things that I think you have to do in order to to uh, you know to try to get some su some success. And what some people start with is always, which is my idea, which is my product. I think before you know you know the world, you have to know yourself. And especially if you can see here, you, you, you identify a SWOT, which is everybody know what a SWOT is, right? SWOT analysis for products. Yeah, okay. Uh, to apply it to yourself, because we have strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and, and threatens, threats. It's really great when you are honest to yourself and you can take your time to write down uh, which are your main weaknesses, which are your main threats. And if you if you don't if you really don't lie to yourself because we tend to do this a lot, we especially with the things we lack, um, you might find really interesting things that might help you to be better in the future. Not only in in, in the entrepreneurial side, but on your life if you want. Uh, once you have yourself, you have to define your idea. Uh, this is probably some uh, something you already know about. 
Uh, my suggestion here is that we don't go crazy with a huge business plan, especially in the beginning. We really first need to know if our time is well invested, if we are not, if we are not going to waste our time while we do our project, because there's already the niche is full, the market is completely full of competitivity, so there's no, there's no reason. So make something basic, some basic market analysis, some basic monetiz monetization model, uh, some basic uh, market approach, competitivity approach, target maybe, but then don't go really far. It, you might lose time and uh, uh, you know it might be useless because it can be, you just need business plans and huge stuff when you're going to pitch VCs, investors, when you really want to go uh, big. And for now, what you need is just to know that you can really start working on that. You can start coding today if you want. Uh, okay, we have our idea, we have ourselves, now we need a team. It's uh, naive to think, uh, for most projects, it's naive to think that uh, we are going to make it on our own. So find the right people for them. Um, what I suggest here, what I've found in the past year, in my, in my experience, is that people, uh, because, yeah, you say, I have an idea, I want the right people to, to work on that. But these people is on Facebook, is on Google, they, they get a lot of money. And yeah, it's right that some people is moved, or most people is moved by money. But not because they love money or they eat money or they smell money. Uh, well, so uh, I don't get into that. But that money buys things uh, that people want. Some people will might like traveling, and then um, uh, money buys traveling. Some people are interested in goods. Some people is interested in status, and money buys all those things. What you have to do for your team to get the rock stars for free, because I assume that you have no money. Let's assume this for for everybody. I have no money. Um, is that you try to find these real reasons why people is move. For some people will be building things, for some people will be just releasing an app in the market. So you don't need the money if you go straight. Money should be the bridge, or money is the bridge for these people. And you will find people that will bring up, bring to you uh, their top quality of their of their work. They will really good, really make good outcomes. Even working three hours, four hours, ten hours a week. Um, and it will be completely for free. This might require time, so uh, don't waste your time. If you have people that will work for you for two months or for two weeks, if you just can create something with these people to go ahead, in the meantime, while you get these rock star people or these good people, these people you want to work with, uh, just do it. Or even if you want to code yourself, if you have two months and you want to learn something, code it yourself, you will be ahead. It makes total sense. Uh, this is the team I'm working on uh, in, my, in my side project. Um, these are the, the people I was speaking about. They are people from here in Berlin. They are rock stars, in my opinion. They have lots of talents. They have experience. They are working in good companies. And they do it for free because they love it, because they found a reason for them. And I can even see, I have seen the work for other companies, and I can see their work now, and it's comparable even better. So it's, it's just amazing. Okay, you have team, you have yourself, you have your product, define a plan, and here what I want to say, and the reason why I put this slide, is that motivation is one of the most important things here. Uh, you will probably think of, uh, you, are, you have people working three hours, four hours a week, ten hours a week, and for some reason those people will probably stop working because they were ill, they, they weren't traveling, so you have to First, in order to not to lose this, you have to go for the simplest possible iteration. So the shortest product that you can uh, deliver for your for your uh, for getting the results you want. So if you if you go for a beta and you want to test if it works technically, do the simplest thing you need for that. If you need to see the penetration or how people use it, do the simplest thing you need for that again. And once you have the simplest thing, do a split it in a small parts so that your team can see some achievement and keep this motivation up. Because I tell you, it's really easy to lose this, uh, this motivation. And once you lose it, it can really be infected to other guys of the team. This is a real challenge, in my opinion. Um, and then just take everything you need. Everything is already there. I think we are pretty lucky in these days that we have tons of resources, much, most of them are for free. This wasn't like that five years ago. Now if you need a training, you, you, you can go to Code Academy, EDX, Coursera, uh, Code School, and most of them are for free. So you have top world quality, because these universities in Coursera and, and EDX, you have Yale, you have Harvard, you have MIT, you have Stanford. It's already for free. So there's no, there's no excuse on that side. Um, 
if you need to put your code somewhere, you have Git, you have SVN, you have Mercurial, and I'm pretty sure you can find the the free site on there as well. On there as well. So another thing which is for free, uh, if you need hosting, if you need scalability, you need elasticity, you need servers down there, you have really two good options, AWS, Amazon, and Google App Engine, which we will go afterwards, we'll see them, we'll see a pricing plan, but both have a free tier, which means that you can reach even 30K users, 20K users without paying, without paying a cent. Um, and then the other two, you have, uh, if you need documentation, which you might need or not, you have Dropbox, you have Google Docs, you have Syncing, you have all the, all the things. And for Manpower, it's just move around, find them, conferences like this, like DroidCon, coworkers, friends, just, it's, this is more on you. What I, my main point being here is that everything, or mostly everything, is for free. Okay, well, that was skipped. Everything is for free. Uh, so it's we have no excuse to to procrastinate or to not to do it. It's really on your side. And this is uh, so we, we we have we are saying that we have resources for free. But what if uh, we go we take off a bit? We get some users. Uh, what happens? Uh, can I pay it? Can I? Um, will I be able to pay it or not? And this is an example I I did. It's really rough, but. It's mainly if you have a photo app, which is really a pretty common app, and you have uh, something like 100K users uploading a picture per day. So this is uh, calculated for the instances, for the transfer data, and for the storage. You will pay something around 260, 270 euro the month, which is pretty fair for having this such amount of users. And with this amount of users, we know that we can go already to BC or to grow bigger. Um, it's, uh, and you can change the, the equation, of course. You can go to 30K users uploading four pictures per day and things like this. Uh, as I said, it's just on you to make it or not. Uh, you have the resources, you can find the people. Everything has to be for free. As long as you have time and passion, you will be ready to, to go. Uh, so that was it. Not, not the whole presentation. That was the, the part of this slide. I just want to share with you five rules that I consider uh, enormously necessary uh, uh, that I, no I normally hear uh, from people that are taken wrong. First one is people say, others say, you know, I, I'm working on something, but I won't tell you about this because it's really, it's really a cool thing. I don't want anybody to copy it. Um, first of all, as I said before, the big companies already have a queue of, of 1,000 ideas, which are really cool for which they have analyzed, they have making deep analysis, they have processes and people for this, for this. so probably they won't go to your idea, they won't look for you in, in Twitter and say, okay, this guy is working on something, let's put the CA there and see what is going on. Because they might think that you won't be as good as them, they might think that the analysis you made won't be as good as, as, as their, so they will probably don't, don't lose, waste their time on you. And for smaller companies, uh, mid-size, small-size, they already have troubles trying to survive. Uh, they have limited resources. Even putting two, three people to a new thing, innovative thing, it's probably not reachable for them. And what you get if you don't make it secret, secret is you will get allies. You will get people that might collaborate with you in your project. You might get potential investors. You might get, in the end, other individuals that will definitely help you. The other day I was in a, in a cafe here in Berlin, which is really known for uh, having people working on their projects. Um, I just, one guy asked, we were working there, one guy asked, what are you guys working on? And I directly said everything to him. And he said, you know, I, I, I just did something two months ago, I have this bank, they are now investing on this kind of projects, take it, I know this VC, so. The opportunities are, are closer to us, closer than, than we think to us, so we, we have to take them. Uh, money, 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 getting rich. This shouldn't be a reason for you. It's, it's fine if it's, if it's a motivational thing, but it shouldn't be your main goal, because it's easier to, to get money in other ways if your interest is money. You can play lottery, you have more chances than becoming a really successful entrepreneur. You can invest in a bank, you can have deposits, you can even go to a bank and rob it. Don't say it was me who told you. Um, but yeah, what I mean is that it's good if it's a motivation, but it shouldn't be your, your main reason, because it might be that it doesn't work. There are really few possibilities that it work. So that shouldn't bring you down, because you thought that was, that was your thing. 
What I call the, the big lie is that what press, what we, are, what we are being told is that there is this gifted, magnificent, fantastic people who just coded their hello world, and after that, they become completely successful, millionaire, super app, uh, worldwide, amazing. And this is not true. Even for the guys which are less unknown, even for, for guys like Zuckerberg, that he really was was really young when he when he got Facebook. He was coding games since he was since he was ten. His father was helping him with that. He had computers since the very beginning. And other guys like uh, Steve Jobs was were working in Atari. Bill Gates was coding since the very beginning. So don't think uh, there's gifted people. There are people like you, and you have the same chances as they had. Maybe yeah, some things like location or, or other things help, but. Uh, from the person perspective, you have the same chances, so that shouldn't bring you down. Yeah, uh, celebrate your defeats. It's something. It's difficult to do because when you when you have a defeat, it's a difficult situation. It's painful. You have to get over it. This, but it's a really nice chance to change things to the direction we want. Because it's really usual that you say to people, go for this, do it, try it. And they say, I have a contract for a flat for one year. I have a contract uh, in my job for two years. And you know, it's not the time for me. When you get over the pain here, once you, you, you are good, again, try to do this as fast as possible. And then sit together with yourself and you know, analyze the next steps. Because you, you can change whatever you want to, to make your project possible. That's what I mean, celebrating your defeats. Uh, this is the great video I had for you, but PDF doesn't play video, so we'll have to... Really? Ah, okay, yeah, no, I cannot do it. I have to be a professional athlete, but I can show you afterwards. Uh, what I mean here is never give up. This is a guy, probably you have seen the videos, Derek Redmond. He was in Barcelona 92 in the Olympics. He was uh, playing the semifinals on the 400 meters. And he was the f he was favored for the medals. What happens is that in the middle of the race he broke one of the main muscles in your limbs. I don't know the name of this, but in his leg. So he went down to the floor. Everybody finished. The race was over. Olympics was over for the, for him. But what he did is three seconds after he reminded himself, "I'm in the Olympics. I cannot just do it like this. I won't give up." So he stood up with this such huge pain in his leg, and he tried to like. Difficu with difficulty, he, he reached the, the, the finish line. He was happy with this. He was, of course, extremely um, sad and crying, but he, he, he just practiced for four years. He just uh, trained really hard, and he, he thought it was the right thing to, to finish. So don't give up. You might have uh, situations where, where you might have reasons to, to quit. But try to you know find support with people around, with your teammates. Try to never quit. This is the for me is the first rule of an entrepreneur: never quit. And the last thing is, uh, it has to be fun for you. It not only will deliver uh, better results, but if it's fun, even if it doesn't work, or even if you fail or whatever you want, you will take something for life. Because in the end, what we look for our lives, what the reason we work, the reason why we try to uh, have a partner, the reason why we travel is to look for fun, right? So if you get fun, this will be something that regardless of the result, it will be something valuable in your life and you will remember over the course of your life. So try to make it fun. It, it has to be your monthly wage. And then the way you make it fun is more your business. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, that was it. I tried to make it fast. Thanks a million, everybody.